Hey, it's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Welcome to another edition of Q&A with the Coach. Today we have a question from Dodi Ali, who says, Please, sir, can you tell me if lifting weights increases punching power, or punchers are born, not made? Thanks for answering. Much love from Egypt. Much love right back to you to Egypt, my friend. So... Lifting weights, I'm a huge proponent of combat sports athletes lifting weights. I think they should lift weights, especially the compound lifts, especially squats and deadlifts. Those will have the most crossover by far, as far as punching goes. Also with punching, I would recommend do pulling exercises as well. Pull-ups, number one, one of the, the kings of pulling exercises. You know, rows and all of that stuff, that, that's fine, okay? Power cleans are great. And some people argue, no, 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 no. I mean, this is conventional wisdom in, in boxing. Even the great Jack Dempsey said, don't lift weights because it will make you muscle bound. And that's, that's the only part, one of the only parts of his book, Championship Fighting, that I will disagree with. Now, by lifting weights, if you look at what people were doing back in Jack Dempsey's day, weightlifters bodybuilders were generally one and the same. What were they doing? Mostly working for aesthetic and not training, not boxing, not doing anything else. And so it was understandable that boxers seeing these slow moving guys who didn't train for speed were slow, right? But what if what if you started cross-training with strength training, with sport-specific movement to make you more powerful? What is the precedent for power? It is strength. What is the precedent for speed? Strength. What is the precedent for athletic performance? Strength. In this day and age, it should be pretty obvious. If you look at any strength and conditioning coach in any sport, except for some reason, combat sports, strength training is huge. If you look at the wimpiest sport in the world, whatever that is, and look at the professional version of that, the athletes are doing squats and deadlifts and sprints and they're taking themselves very seriously because they want to have the most athletic advantages that they possibly can. But for some reason, when it comes to martial arts, one of the, perhaps the highest risk sport out there. You would think these guys would take a more scientific approach to it than following 300-year-old uh, conventional wisdom, which has been proven wrong. I had a similar uh, related question to a fellow who was asking me if plyometric jumps would increase his punching power. Now, plyo jumps and lifting weights, it won't directly make you a better puncher. I mean, if you do a bunch of deadlifts and then hit the heavy bag, uh, it won't automatically grant you punching power. Obviously, it's something that takes time. But when you are stronger, your muscles are able to work better. Stronger isn't necessarily the same thing as bigger. I mean, check out these, uh, these biceps right there. So I've got a friend with big, giant, beefy arms, and um, I remember one time I took a 32-kilo kettlebell and I was teaching Turkish get-ups with the kettlebell so I'm doing Turkish get-ups with this 32 kilo kettlebell and you can probably see my my arms are not giant I'm six foot one and about um, 205 pounds not uh, I'm long and lanky so I'm lifting this uh, this kettlebell and my friend who is much much bigger much much stronger than me he picks up and he tries to do it and he fails and he says, I, I can't do that. And this is a guy who could like deadlift half a ton. And he said, that is a different type of strength to what I have developed. I don't have that kind of strength. And that shocked me. I thought, man, you're strong enough to squish people's heads with your fingers. And I found a way I'm stronger than you. Woo! That made me feel special. But, uh, yeah, there are different types of strength. There are different types of muscle fibers, different ways to train those. So, obviously, if you want to be 
a fast puncher, if you want to be a hard puncher, if you want to be a good puncher, you've got to put in the volume of work with actual punching. In addition to lifting weights. Lifting weights, it's like that foundation. It's a foundational exercise. It's something I believe all athletes should do. Do your compound lifts, make your body as strong as it can be. When it's stronger, it's less likely to injure, it's more likely to cooperate. Plyo jumps as well, very similar thing. Plyo jumps will train explosive movements. I mean, it's an explosive movement. It'll make your muscles better at <clears throat> doing that explosive movement. And when we punch, we're driving into the floor with our legs. We're, we're throwing that, the hips and the shoulders around in some very dynamic, violent ways, which is notably different than the movement of a plyo jump, but there is crossover. If it makes you a better athlete, it makes you a better fighter. But you've got to be patient with it. I know some people, they, they lift weights for a few weeks and they're like, I'm not, I don't have crazy knockout power yet. What's going on? I, I've lifted weights for a few weeks and everybody's still beating me and grappling. What's going on? Be patient with it. It's a years and years type of thing as opposed to a quick fix. But after you spend a few years lifting and then you compete against those who don't, you can get some interesting responses from them. Specifically, dude, you're so strong. One of the most backhanded compliments in all of martial arts, especially in jiu-jitsu, in grappling, where, when we're always told it's about technique, not strength. And then they have a pragmatic demonstration of what strength can actually do. And they become very uncomfortable with it. So get as strong as you can. Don't believe in wives' tales. Put it to the test. Thanks for watching. Now get out there and train.